Nick Durst and John Brown. Episode 8 of the Mets cast right here on WGSports.com. I'm Nick Durst, joined again, as always, by John Brown. John, you know, the Mets, they're playing terrible, but the big news that has dominated the headlines over the past week is that Matt Harvey was asked to go to the minor leagues. He denied it. He said no. And then he was DFA'd, and he's traded to the Reds for Devin Mazarasco. Uh, Devin Mazarosco is a catcher. Obviously, the Mets needed a catcher, but this guy is basically like Jose Lobatone. He gets hurt a lot. He's a career 234 hitter. He's got nine hits this season in 41 at bats, so it's really not much of an improvement. But the thing is, Harvey is gone. Matt Harvey is gone. And the thing about Matt Harvey being gone is that this whole story gets totally blown out of proportion. Because the fact of the matter is that he did not play a big role in the Mets' recent losing streak. So I don't know why they're saying, oh, it was all him. Like, he didn't play a role. He was in there as a reliever in blowouts. Matt Harvey, I think, was very, very poorly treated. Very very mistreated uh, in the last week week or so after the DFA. Uh, And here's why, John. Uh... You, know, you need to remember that this guy literally gave his rib for the New York Mets. Okay, he gave up his his, his money basically. Now he's not going to get in free agency now to to pitch down the stretch in 2015 when his agent was saying, you know, don't pitch anymore, and Olsen was saying, don't pitch anymore. The Mets fan base does not get re-energized if he's not the Dark Knight and he's starting the All Star game at City Field. You need to remember that this is a guy who, after Tommy John surgery, comes back, and he wins Comeback Player of the Year in 2015, and he pitches the Mets to the World Series. They do not get to the World Series without him. And in his heyday as the Dark Knight, he was a top three pitcher in baseball. His numbers were outstanding. They were historic. Everyone's like, oh, this guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. And he went... He, he he was just amazing for the team. He had a 253 ERA. He had 25 wins, 449 strikeouts in 427 innings combined. And that's in 2012, 2013. And when he came back in 2015 from Tommy John surgery, of course, you know, 2016, he had thoracic outlet syndrome, loses his rib, and he's never been the same. He would have had a lot more wins if the Mets weren't so bad. You have to remember how terrible the Mets were in 2012 and 2013. And to me, John... Uh, I just think that he, you know, he, he lost it health wise. He, he, he hasn't recovered. Um, but I don't understand all the bashing towards this guy right now because if you look back, the guy did a lot for the franchise. He meant a lot to the team. Uh, no, I haven't let you spoken speak yet, but I had to get it <laughs> off my chest for the, the big dramatic open here. Uh, yeah. Matt Harvey, he's gone, but I think we need to take a step back and appreciate what he did for the franchise. Um, I, that's where I'm going to counter I think you're looking at it very micro. I'm going to take a macro look because we got to look at his the whole package, not just what Steve Metric says. And, and, you know, because a part of me does feel bad for the guy. You know, he, he's one of these like crazy uber talented guys when you think he's on, you know, he's on this track to just be a, a star in the league. But 
but, but, but it's not just the injuries. And I will admit that he was a big, big part of it in the whole dark Knight thing, energizing the Mets fan base. Um, but the dating models being in, on page six in the post, the out partying, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Everyone kind of ignores that nonsense when you're really good. The difference is when you're not good, then all of that becomes an issue again. You know, it's very similar to like the Doc Gooden situation. You know, when Doc Gooden was smoking crack, but he was winning 24 games a year, no one cared. You know, they, they poo-pooed it. They, hey, we'll get you some help or well, we won't. See, Matt find. Harvey was not doing drugs, okay? And the thing about Matt Harvey is he was so good that the spotlight was always on him. Look at the New York Giants, for example, Odell Beckham Jr. This guy cannot go to his mailbox without it being on the, the back pages of the newspaper or on TMZ. Yeah. That's because that's because it's New York. If Matt Harvey was doing all this in, in Cincinnati all these years, his new team, it wouldn't be an issue. You'd never hear about this. I know I, I get your point about if you're good, nobody cares. Because look, Derek Jeter, the biggest womanizer in the history of baseball, he was out always doing all these crazy things, but nobody seemed to care because he was good. And that's why I don't understand the hate over Harvey doing this because people, other well, players and other sports do this all the time. And the only reason you're noticing now is because he was injured and he he's physically not the same and he's not he hasn't performed well this this season and last season. This this is where I think you know uh, I would agree with you to the extent right here. Harvey was getting suspended for missing games for like sleeping through a game or, or, or something like that. You know he's 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 that's a baseball because it is a team sport unlike some of these other sports. Um, and it's one of the things that Derek Jeter was always a great clubhouse guy. Um, that you know, for all you know, him dating Mariah Carey, whatever, it didn't matter because not only was he playing great on the field, but he was also a great clubhouse guy. When you get a guy who has an attitude like Matt Harvey, you know, he's giving people the finger, he's refusing to talk to the press, you know, he's uh, sitting courtside at the Knicks, he's at the Ranger games. So you know, yeah, the New York media is a problem, but you know, he he loved it. He was a diva. He got himself all involved in it. Um, the the problem when it comes to me is the other stuff. The I don't know if you remember, but like a week before he got released, um, he was it was when we were out playing the Padres. He was out in L.A. one night partying, and uh, you know all the media people were talking about it. Like, listen, a partying on a Tuesday night's not that big of a deal if you're playing well, but you know I think it compacts of you're not playing well, you know. Um, but John, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you seriously think that when other teams are coming to San Diego or L.A. that their players are not going out the night before games or after games? Well, once once you once you missed a game because you're you're super late or whatever, and the microscope's on you, then absolutely. Listen, there's a lot of players who've been, played on the Mets and Yankees throughout the years that the, have both played in New York media who didn't didn't have this issue, you know. Um, and when you when you look at it, this is what I really think that when it, the crux of the issue is, I think Matt Harvey and the media is pr- probably you know a part of the problem here too. Sort of took that victory lap, you know. Uh, the Dark Knight, blah, 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 you know, uh, all this kind of stuff. We didn't win that World Series. Going to a World Series and losing it rather than winning it is apples and oranges. You know, in 30 years, no one's going to know who Matt Harvey is. You know, because you look at his career numbers, he's 34 and 35 or something like that. You know, it's not, a, you know, he wasn't winning, um, you know, Cy Young's left and right. He wasn't Doc Gooding. He was very, very good, but he wasn't Doc. And I think Doc is like a great example of what happens when you are super good and you do win the World Series. Uh, he wasn't either of those things. Now he had the potential, absolutely. And well, you know, again, I need to. I can't trust this enough. He was on the path for greatness. I mean, he was twenty-five and eighteen. They only lost eighteen games because the Mets were terrible. He had better numbers through his first three years than like a guy like Doc Gooden, but. He physically was unable to bounce back from thoracic Alex syndrome because in his last three seasons, he had nine wins and he had 19 losses. And that's just, I mean, it's not like all of a sudden overnight this happens because you don't just go from dominating the sport, having a 220-70 year right to a 271 year right. And the next season, you're a 486. The next season, you're at 670. Like, you're, it's not, you don't just lose those skills overnight. It's obviously, I, I can't think of any other player who came back from thoracic outlet syndrome and was was ever the same. 
And it's, it's a real shame, man. I'm personally going to be rooting for him in Cincinnati. He's going to be able to start there the whole rest of the season. The Reds are probably the worst team in baseball. So, you know, I wish him the best of luck. I just think it's a sad situation the way things ended. Uh, if you go back three years, everyone loved the guy. But as you always see in New York, the fans will quickly turn on somebody. And oh, of course, of course. But one, one, one little caveat he was never better than Doc Gooden. Doc Gooden in 1985 went 24 and 4 with a 1.53 ERA and threw 16 complete games. Well, that's, that's like a different era. Time. The, the, you know, the Mets, the Mets, and in general, would never let anybody throw more than a complete game in a oh, season. Oh, I know, but that's a all time. That's like an all time. Like, you know, th- there are some people on Twitter right now saying, "Oh, I wonder if trading Matt Harvey is going to be like when the Mets traded Young Nolan Ryan." Um, the difference is Matt Harvey 28. If you look at Doc Gooden's numbers, by 28 he was washed up. He won the ma- vast majority of his 135 games before uh, you know turning 29. 28's um, a show me year in baseball. It's usually a pay me year in baseball. Um, it's either hey you got it or you don't. Um, and I think Matt Harvey would have gotten that gotcha money. Um, you know I I still I don't blame Matt honestly for the World that World Series game. I blame uh, Terry Collins. But, uh, well, Familia blew it, and yeah. I mean, if I'm Terry Collins, I'm doing the same thing, letting Harvey go out there. And, John, you know, it didn't turn out well, but I personally, at the time, I liked that Harvey was yelling at Terry oh. Collins saying, you need to let me back out there, because he was dominating. Oh, no, I completely agree. And that's, like, that's the thing. Like, that's the mindset you want from your, your, your pitcher. You know, especially your young stud pitcher, you want him to want the ball always, always, always. The difference is, Matt, you're, at the time, you're 26 um, this, this, uh, manager wants to take the ball from you, you know, uh, that's Terry, but that's not, that's not Matt's fault. Matt, right. Matt is doing I what mean, you want. The biggest problem in that game and, you know, all of Harvey's career is that the Mets offense just never score runs for this guy. We saw it with Johan Santana. How many games did the Mets lose one nothing for, for Johan Santana? Cause they just couldn't score. And I mean, the, the Harvey era, you had three fantastic years and three not so good years and this year you know I was a little surprised they even pulled him from the rotation because remember his first start he he had the he gave he had five shot innings and that was you know that was pretty pretty impressive I, I thought in the, in the rain um and then this year you know he didn't pitch terribly in his following two starts but they quickly moved him to the to the bullpen and this is what I can't get over because we're moving him to the bullpen, and then we're DFAing him and trading him so that a guy in Jason Vargas, who we both said should have been a reliever when they signed him, so he could start. This guy is terrible. He hasn't gone more than four innings so far this season, and his ERA is probably like thirty-seven. It's it's nuts. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna steal some of Mike Francis's thunder here because a caller called him the other day and, and he had a similar argument that you did, saying, "Hey, look at." Matt's numbers and Wheeler's numbers and obviously Vargas's, you know, they pulled Harvey and then DFA, you know, DFA him so quick where these other guys in the rotation are sticking it up. And uh, Mike had a really good point. He's saying that, you know, there's a changing in the guard. You know, Harvey has an attitude problem where if he's not, if the, just say the pitching coach and the manager telling him, Hey, we're going to call the game. You got to listen to the, you know, what the pitches we're calling. We're, we're going to say, you got to throw more breaking stuff. You got to throw more change ups, blah, 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 blah. And Harvey's like, nope, not doing it. Um, that kind of defiance type stuff. It could be Mickey Calloway, you know, trying to assert himself and change the culture and go, listen, no, I'm the manager. You know, I call the games. You throw the games. It, that, that's the way it goes, especially when you get hit up. So it's obviously not, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Um, I could see that being a little bit of like a power struggle where they're like, listen, Harvey's a bad apple. We want to try to change the, the uh, you know, the clubhouse mood here to to be more authoritarian. You know, Kerry Collins, you know, I like the guy. I think he's a nice guy. I think he knows baseball really well, but he's too nice and he's a pushover. And I think because of that, young guys who came up under Terry – have always had this like authoritarian problem, like you know Valdespin, you know calling him, you know an F word, and you know all those other stuff. Terry was too much of a pushover, you know. I, I think there's a a good area between you know you know you know Larry Boa running it crazy, and then you know uh, Terry Collins being a pushover. But um, I I think that might play into it, man. I really think that you know he has a problem with authority, definitely, because yeah, I'm the I'm the Dark Knight. So um, see ya.
Well, it, it's just it's just a real shame because I'd rather have him be starting right now than Jason Vargas, who's given the team absolutely nothing except losses. And then to just I pour to, to pour salt I, in the wound, John. Who do they call up after they send Matt Harvey down? Hansel Robles, who immediately comes up and loses the game for the team. <laughs> Did you see that tweet I mentioned you in with that that idiot yeah, with a points, bullet? He points to the oh, where is this ball? I, I, he points to everything. It's insane. I don't. We we, we did a whole episode on where is Hansel Robles pointing to? It's crazy. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, he's been up and down so much. He's probably running out of options here shortly. So uh, well, I maybe, hope so. Maybe, maybe we'll send him down, and somebody else will decide they like punishing themselves to run him out there. You know, I, I agree with you that Harvey has a much higher ceiling than somebody like Vargas, who's on the end of his career anyway. You know, how old is Vargas? 34, 35? Um, Around you know. there. Might be older. Yeah, so, you know, Harvey still throws hard, which that's a big thing. Like, they can tell when a guy's arm is just has dead arm. He's still throwing, you know, pretty hard, pretty hard. He doesn't have that A-plus stuff that he used to, but, you know, he's still hitting 94 consistently. Um, I think with a little bit of tuning, Harvey could still be a very good pitcher in this league. I think it's more in between his ears. I think Harvey um, needs to see like a sports psychiatrist. Like, listen, you're not the same pitcher you were. You need to change your game a little bit. You know, I think CeCe over in the Bronx did a really good job of that. When CeCe was on Milwaukee, he was like a different kind of pitcher. You know, he was a big power pitcher, you know, over, you know, real strong, great high heat fastballs, strike people out all the time. Super hard slider, and then now he's he's changed his game up where he has a splitter. He throws, you know, he touches the outside every so often. You know, the the greatest of all time at at changing the game that way was Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox, you know, never had the ninety nine mile fastball or anything, but he had a a, a decent ninety three, and that fell off, and it, he didn't miss a beat. He just changed his game completely. Paint the outside. You know, he had great, great, great command because he lost that great power. You know, it's tough. A lot of guys never figure it out. Robles will we'll never figure it out. No. You know, I don't Callaway, know. I like that. You know, he said after the DFA that he failed Matt Harvey because, you know, it, <laughs> it looks like he did. I don't understand. I don't understand their quick move to move to the bullpen really still because his first start, we got to five short innings. Second two starts, he gave up four runs, but. He wasn't the worst thing in the world. I'd rather a pitcher go up four runs than, you know, Vargas, who would be giving up nine, ten runs. This is nuts. But we'll see what happens to him. The only thing that really was positive uh, in the past few days with the Mets, because they were playing terrible, they lost six in a row, uh, just a disaster, uh, at home. Uh, so the, the only thing, John, would be that uh, your fellow Irishman, P.J. Conlin, made his Major League debut uh, he looked pretty. He looked. He looked good. I think. Uh, of course, they pulled him so quickly, so he didn't get a decision. And but he he got his first major league hit. Uh, what are your thoughts on this young kid? Love it, love it. So um, I tweeted some pictures from the game of his family in the uh, you know in the stands. Um, and those first eight batters he faced, he looked really good. And I think uh, I think the adrenaline kind of fell out of you know the all oh, the pump. Your first major league game. You know, it's he's the first Irish player to. to to play in the major leagues and since like the 1940s, you know, there's all this stuff going on. And then, um, you know, I think, you know, he lost a little bit, but he still has good stuff. He's a lefty. Um, so he'll be back up here shortly. Um, only 56 pitches thrown. So I think they had a, a kind of quick hook. I think that might've been Mickey trying to like protect him. You know, if he sees that he's losing a little bit, maybe, you know, cause he's, his adrenaline's sort of dropping down. He's getting settled in. Um, he, you know, Mickey thinks he's losing it. So he takes him out of the game. So he doesn't get knocked up and ruin a kid's confidence. Um, but Hey, he hit the bullpen stinks and he almost lost the game over it. So, right. Uh, with him. Uh, a little background on me with PJ Kyle and obviously John said he tweeted. So make sure about it. Make sure you check out John on Twitter, S underscore sports and me on Twitter, Nick underscore Durst. I used to work for the Brooklyn Cyclones hosting a weekly web show. I interviewed this guy and He's a very nice person, and he's got a good head on his shoulders. And I knew he was going to be good because in 2015 with the Cyclones, this guy had a zero ERA as a reliever. And then the next year, he goes to single A and just starter. And then he's double A as a starter, and he's an all-star. So he could be like a good four or five guy in the rotation, uh, or he could also be 
Jerry Blevins, and Blevins has had a hell of a career as a lefty specialist. So I I agree with you. We'll definitely see him up there, and it's only a matter of time that they do something because, like you mentioned, they call Robles back up. Uh, he blows the game that day. Then we fast forward to Tuesday night in Cincinnati. Uh, Vic Cali pulls Jerry Blevins to bring Robles in, who automatically gives up a, a game, uh, not a game ending hit, but he gives up a hit, a run scores, and the very next batter, he gives the two run home run, he's pointing at it, so that guy's a disaster, the bullpen's a total mess, Anthony Swarzak is in witness protection program, because I don't know where this guy is, we signed this guy, John, and he's not, he hasn't, I think he's played a game, I don't understand, uh, Sandy Olsen is so bad at signing pitchers in the offseason, it's crazy, and I don't think this guy deserves to have a job much longer. And just to put things in full perspective here, wrap it up in a circle. If Matt Harvey wasn't good in 2013 and 12, there's no way Sandy Olsen was still going to be the GM at this point. Because he sold the, he sold the Will Ponds on the fan base on, we got Harvey, well wait till you see Wheeler, wait till you see the other guys in the rotation, wait till you see Montero. Um, and <laughs> and it, it just saved his yeah. ass. But he doesn't, know what he, he doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to pitching. Yeah, wait, wait till Mejia comes up. Him and Familia. <laughs> hey, so that's it. Now we come full circle. Now we blame Harvey for keeping Sandy here. Thanks, Harvey. Aye, aye, aye. All right, so Sandy Olsen, he's got to go, just like Matt Harvey has gotten. He's been shipped out of town to the Reds. Hopefully it works out for him. Hopefully Vargas can turn it around. Hopefully P.J. Conlin is a future Major League star. Um, and in case you guys didn't know, John is Irish, so anything Irish, John, you support, right? No, no, that's not true. Not anything, but a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for episode eight of the Mets cast. Eight is great, but I would have to say all of our episodes are pretty great as well. So that's going to do it. Who knows what's going to happen between now and the next Mets cast. But what we can do is hope for the best. Hopefully no more injuries. DeGrom, that says, coming back for his next start. We'll see, though. So let's go Mets. Mets, 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 Mets,